the net. Ayan. Hi, good evening. Um, I apologize that uh, today I'm late I'm doing my Facebook Live. But uh, let's see if the, the sound is okay. Just let me know if it's, if it's not. This week has been a full one. It began with uh, Andres Bautista's impeachment. Well, uh, the excitement began with Andres Bautista's impeachment. And yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, and we saw that we, that first he had attempted, well, not attempted, he sent a resignation letter. Uh, first, the resignation letter that was leaked first was that which he gave to the commission on elections. Uh, and then subsequently we received, uh, we saw a copy that he had submitted to the office of the president. In both instances, he said that his resignation is effective on, December, on the last day of December 2017. Uh, as it happens, the Committee on Justice had already forwarded its recommendation for the dismissal of his impeachment case to the plenary. The plenary then voted to, to whether or not to uphold the findings of the Committee on Justice, and then the Committee on Just, well, and then the plenary voted to overrule the Committee on Justice's findings of dismissal for uh, insufficient because the complaint was insufficient in form. Uh, given that, uh, Andres Bautista found himself impeached by the House. Now, for those who had not read the previous posts or saw the previous slide, uh, we'd like to inform you that impeachment doesn't mean the trial in the Senate. Impeachment is what happens when the House finds probable cause or when the House finds that the complaint for impeachment is sufficient in form and substance and there is cause to send the complaint to the Senate for hearing or for trial. So the trial that happens in the Senate is not the impeachment. The impeachment is what happens after when the House votes uh, in favor of sending the complaint to the Senate. There's a buzzing sound here. Wait, there you go. May static. May static pa ba? Okay. Uh, all right. So what happened here? Apparently, there was an agreement. The House Committee on Justice uh, possibly had gotten wind or had been had been informed that uh, Comelec Chairman Andres Bautista would be willing to resign, uh, provided he wasn't uh, if in exchange for not being impeached by the House. So the problem is that he sent a resignation letter that was not immediate, indicating to the president that he would be uh, leaving office only at the last day of December 2017. And this, of course, did not sit well with the Speaker as well as with the Committee on Justice or with the other congressmen. So they all voted to, um, to, up, to overrule the Committee on Justice's findings, dismissing the complaint. Therefore, the vote in the House wasn't to impeach but rather to overrule the finding of the Committee on Justice and to find probable cause to send the case for trial in the Senate. So, now you can say that Andres Bautista is impeached. However, he still remains to be the chairman of the COMELEC because impeachment only means the House proceedings. He can be removed from office after the Senate conducts a trial and the senators vote against his staying in office or votes to remove him from office. Or, if it happens before that, his resignation becomes effective uh, or, the, or he changes his resignation to one that is immediate. So until such a time as his resignation becomes effective or he changes it to an immediate resignation, then he will be going to trial in the Senate. Okay. Um, meron pa rin bang ano? Meron pa rin bang static? Uh, okay, if there's static, I'm just going to have to change the, um, my microphone. Uh, please let me know if may static ka. Better to use a headphone. All right, all right. Let me just change my mic. Uh, I'm worried because it's going to be low battery. That's why I'm using a, um, a desktop mic, a desk mic. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we just like to clarify that uh, impeachment means the proceedings in the House. Remember that Andres Bautista is not removed from office. Huh? He is merely uh, changed. He is merely... Uh, removed, uh, he's merely impeached, kumbaga, but he's not yet removed from office. Impeachment is house proceedings. Meron pang static? Okay. 
All right, how is that? I think that sound will be better now. This, the static should be gone. Okay. Uh, may static pa ba? Uh, meron pa po. Parang may ground po yung sound. That's impossible because this is a different mic. Hello? Okay. How's that? Okay na po. Ayan, okay na. All right. So, we'll, we'll just use this one. Um, so, the, the good news is that no matter what, by the end of December this year, Andres Bautista will be removed from office. Now, what does that happen? Is there an effect of his resignation on his impeachment? Not really. It doesn't affect his impeachment. He's still impeached, and the case will still continue to trial unless the resignation, it, unless it's overtaken by events. The Senate trial can be overtaken by events, the event being his resignation. So, kung hindi pa natutuloy yung Senate impeachment trial, tapos umabot ng Disyembre, ibig sabihin, um, effective yung resignation first, there is no need to go to trial. Okay? So, for those who haven't yet shared this uh, this live, uh, please go ahead and do so. And for those who haven't yet clicked the follow button, please go ahead and do so. And then subscribe to the live so that you'll get notices of the, the next ones. Now, the more exciting thing that happened, of course, is the um, issue regarding Maria Josefina Virginia or Jover Laurio. Um, Ms. Laurio is a 36, apparently a 36-year-old law student and she started a Facebook page in December of 2016. Um, eventually, she launched a separate site called Pinoy Ako Blog, but the Pinoy Ako Blog was largely anonymous. In other words, it could not be linked to her at the earliest stages. Um, Pinoy Ako blog and uh, other blogs like Silent No More apparently have been sharing um, each other's posts or posted very similar um, posts, very similar articles and a lot of them were at the very least libelous, bordering on libelous or very, very, and were very, very clearly anti-administration. So, um, to date, her blog has about 90,000 followers, but it's primarily known for criticism of the Duterte administration, as well as of bloggers who support uh, President Duterte, including myself. But we'll try to be objective about this person. Mm. In When the Seven Deadly Sins article came out in Silent No More, there was a subsequent uh, article apparently, either a shared article or a reworded article, very similar to that which was posted by Silent No More. Um, eventually, her identity was uh, disclosed. Well, her identity was not what had come into question. The, the author of the Pinoy Ako. Oops. Can somebody please tell TP, thinking Pinoy, I'm on live right now. Can, can somebody please tell him? The same way I was calling him last time he was doing live. So I'll just be live for a short while because I have to talk to him. Um, so, so in the weeks that, in the past two weeks, uh, it was easy enough for uh, Thinking Pinoy to look at public information or listed information from the website or from other sources to determine the possible identity of the persons running that blog. It began with the uh, possible identity first of the owner slash possible administrator of Silent No More. We'll not discuss the details because those details are available on Thinking Pinoy's page or in his blog. So what happened was very recently, um, Miss Laurio came out and uh, admitted to being the owner administrator, and in fact, her words were, uh, e, "Ako si Pinoy ako blog e ano um, uh, and and revealed that she had been uh, she's solely solely, and that's the keyword, responsible for the articles that were written in that page. Mm. The, the problem that Ms. Laurio has now is that there are several uh, bloggers who would like to hold her accountable for what they deem as libelous posts. Uh, in the meantime, Ms. Laurio uh, announced that she will be filing cases against the people she feels have maligned or threatened her 
uh, allegedly maligned or allegedly threatened her. Uh, and she says that she will uh, file suit for, I'm not sure if it would be libel, but definitely she says that she will be filing under the Data Privacy Act. Now, the Data Privacy Act is Republic Act 10173, and it penalizes usually uh, personal information processors. General rule. Personal information processors refers to any person, natural or juridical, qualified to collect this information, uh, to whom personal information or a, to whom a personal information controller can outsource the processing of data. So what we can see here is that the personal information processor or a personal information controller are the persons who are primarily penalized under the Data Privacy Act. These people are the ones who are authorized to collect data. So, well, not exactly authorized, but for example, you're trying to set up a blog, then you give personal information, your name, your address, and all of that. Now, this information is supposed to be protected under the Data Privacy Act. And therefore, uh, mishandling or disclosure of the information will make the these persons liable. And that's the general rule. So, um, a third party who, who compromises the security of that information is generally not uh, penalized. The exception being under the same law, uh, hold on, I, I want to give you the exact wording of the law. Um, accountability, there you go. Um, the personal information controller is accountable for complying with the requirements of the Act and shall use reasonable means to provide a comparable level of protection while the information is being processed by a third party. Now, a personal information controller shall designate an individual who is accountable for the organization's uh, compliance with this act, which means that the pri persons primarily liable are the controllers of this personal information. So they have to, uh, people who hold this personal information have to safeguard the information. They have to have a security policy they have to have a process for identifying and re reasonably foreseeable vulnerabilities in their system, and they have to regularly monitor security breaches. Um, if the okay, the section twenty six of the same act says that accessing personal information due to negligence shall be penalized by imprisonment. In other words, the person still being held accountable here, whether it is deliberate or by negligence, and it's primarily by negligence, is still the data in the information the personal information controller or the personal information processor. So um, however Um, there is also such a thing as unauthorized processing of personal information, which means that any information processing which is not authorized by the owner of that personal information. Malicious disclosure is under Section 31 means that any personal information controller or information processor or any of its officials employees or agents discloses the said information. Take note that this not, does not refer to a third party uh, who breaches the uh, security of the personal information controller or processor. Yeah. Um, so clearly when Ms. Uh, Laurio says that she will be filing under the Data Privacy Act, then she intends to file against the people who have processed that information and not against third parties who managed to access that information. Um, she only mentioned one other law, which is libel, uh, in which case it's, it's very clear who she is referring to. She is probably referring to any person who made a malicious imputation of a crime, vice, or defect upon her. Um, however, the same way that Ms. Laurio claims that she will file libel suits, she is also vulnerable to the same because of her very critical articles against uh, many of the bloggers. And full disclosure, one of those is me. 
but primarily uh, most of the articles were directed at uh, Ms. Sasot, uh, Thinking Pinoy, occasionally Asset Lorraine Badoy, Chrisette Laureta Chu, and uh, several others, uh, including the blogger known as Maharlika. So um, it looks like this is going to be exciting in Lawsuit City with uh, both parties threatening lawsuits. So let's see for, uh, what's going to happen with that one. So let's, let's check your questions now because those are the two primary incidents unless you, you have anything new that you'd like us to discuss. Sana ma-mention naman po yung side ng pro-PRRD gawin ng PCOO. All right, let's talk about PCOO. But full disclosure, I am uh, a consultant slash contracted service in the office of uh, PCOO social media um, with um, working with uh, Assistant Secretary Moka Uson. Um, what is this issue with the PCOO? Well, I think the what becomes an issue here is what we expect the presidential uh, communications and operations office to be doing. Now, for example, under the PCOO is spokesperson, spokesman uh, Ernesto Abelia and uh, Secretary Abelia, uh, USEC Abelia's primary obligation is to communicate to the public in lieu of the president. In other words, when spokesman Abelia speaks, it is as though he is speaking for the president. Therefore, uh, it is uh, it is politically, possibly politically inadvisable for spokesman Abelia to undertake the defense of the president because, you know, these matters are something that we discuss in social media. But uh, it does not rise to this level. At least it's, that's the way it looks right now. We'll get more information later. What is the job of Secretary Martin Andanar? Primarily kasi, as head of uh, presidential communications and operations office, under Secretary Abelia are several agencies, PTV, PNA, uh, the communications office in Malacanang, which has several divisions, including the division of ASEC Moka and uh, other matters. In fact, it is also Secretary Abelia who, uh, who has under him uh, under secretaries in charge of media relations and that media relations includes primarily those with the traditional press. So when we ask PCOO do something, the question is what do you want PCOO to do? Do you want PCOO to descend to the level of uh, bloggers? Uh, do you want the uh, Secretary Martin to be undertaking a rigorous defense of the president when its primary obligation is to communicate to the public um, information regarding the president's activities and to speak on behalf of the president? If you want PCOO to do something, it's as though you're asking the president to make a defense of himself. Um, perhaps there are people who are obligated to do that, so let us see. Uh, the information has been received by Secretary Andanar, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see what actions he will be undertaking. Uh, personally, I feel that Secretary Andanar has um, has done his job because, you know, speaking for the president is not Secretary Andanar's job. That is Secretary Abelia's, uh, under Secretary Abelia's job. So let's see. Um, let's let's talk about your other questions. Uh, okay, if we're going to be uh, suing people, I think it is also best that we do not disclose what your full uh, lawsuit is going to be so that they don't anticipate your defenses. Diba? Okay, other questions? Ako, um, as you use yung question ko, uh, my question is, what exactly do you want PCOO to do? And is it congruent with the duties and obligations of PCOO? Um, remember that the primary duty of the PCOO is to communicate to the public on behalf of the president. And the primary job of speaking exactly for the president is secret under Secretary Abelias. And the other communications facilities are under the jurisdiction of Secretary Andanar. So let me know so that I, we can get PCOO to answer or to, to respond appropriately. Uh, we can always deliver the information. So uh, what I'd like to know is, um, what do you want them to do? When uh, Jover Lauria, for instance, is interviewed by uh, BBC, 
do you want the PCOO to respond accordingly? They have not been asked by the BBC for their side. Uh, however, I assure you that if the BBC does ask the PCOO, then it will respond accordingly. So maybe that is a question that we can raise to the BBC. We interviewed Joe Verlario. The question is why was there no corresponding interview or viewpoint taken from the other bloggers like uh, SAS or like Thinking Pinoy who initiated the move to discover who, who Pinoy Ako blog is, uh, actually is. Okay. Um, on the other hand, okay, what is your reading attorney on this series of events? Sabi ni Nikki Saralvo. Uh, one, Pam crying emails got hacked. The following day, Jover admits she's Pinoy Ako blog. Philippine Star gave voice to uh, Jover. A platform for live interview and then the BBC interview. Well, of course, you know, when you, you set a series of events in that sequential order, obviously you have a point there. But let's begin. We did not discuss BAM's alleged revelation. The only reason I did that is because uh, Thinking Pinoy had already taken apart that and had given which uh, his opinion, which I, I agree with, uh, although I would not have phrased it as colorfully as he did. Um, what TP did was he questioned why Senator Aquino would consider these accounts as hacked. Because uh, generally hacked accounts, once uh, an email account is opened and uh, the information has been breached, generally a hacker will change the uh, password so that the real owner of that email, uh, that, yes, that email account will no longer be able to access it. So. Uh, also, it seems rather uh, questionable to go uh, to, uh, to have a press conference and claim to everybody that these emails were uh, hacked when all you have are draft emails that you claim the owners did not originally write. Um, why does this sound suspicious? The other thing that you did not include, Nikki, is that a, few, a week or two ago, the AFP announced that they did discover that there are, in fact, ouster moves against the president. So that might also be something else to consider in this series of events. What do they think about it? Well, I think that two circumstances might be a coincidence, but three is certainly not. So, but let us see. Um, right now, there is reasonable uh, grounds to be suspicious of these consequential activities. Bakit ang dali naman naging international media streams itong si Jover? Well, of course, the obvious answer to that would be that she has access to it. The question is how she has access to it. Um, the general suspicion is that she's working together with some uh, government officials aligned with the, with the opposition and that uh, her access was facilitated through that oppositionist party. Uh, let's let's see. Uh, I think that that's, it's reasonable to think that, but ako, I personally would like to wait for more information. Uh, nevertheless, that it's it it does seem highly suspicious. Uh, Dij Pangnet says, "Buti pa po kayo nila sa sa TP na pagtanggol ang administration pero ang PCOO parang wala." Excuse me, I'm with PCOO, but I'm with ASEC Moka. Um, if may libel case ka, tinatanong ni Renka, and proven guilty, pwede ka pa ba mag-take ng bar? Well, the general rule is no because, it, uh, well, it depends no, on what the penalty is. Kasi if the penalty has uh, what we call moral turpitude, then it's, uh, uh, there's a huge likelihood that you will no longer be allowed to take the bar. You will effectively be debarred. But until you're convicted, then uh, you only have to disclose to the Supreme Court that you have pending cases. At least that's how it was when we took the bar. Uh, Angelo Chonko says, Attorney, please enlighten people how WebGov works. How does this work? Can PRD just declare it? What does it mean when he needs to first declare a coup against his own government? Okay. Uh, Angelo is correct in characterizing WebGov as a coup against your own government. The, the way it had been proposed by some, uh, some social media advocates is that the president will declare uh, will dissolve Congress and uh, suspend, I guess, the Supreme Court. 
and then uh, declare the civil service vacant except from, for some of the necessary services, and then change everything. That is the general rule. The pattern being uh, after the revolutionary government of 1986. Um, the 1986 government, uh, transition government, uh, removed, uh, tempor well, continued the, the, the services of the courts, but took out uh, the legislative, and of course abrogated the entire executive, except for the president, who then proceeded to assign OICs, or officers in charge, of the government, uh, various government agencies, as well as the local government units. Um, the Cori government was immediately recognized internationally, thus establishing its legitimacy. The problem with a RevGov that uh, happens artificially and unilaterally is declared by the president, we might have trouble being recognized by foreign governments and therefore it will be difficult to establish legitimacy if it is not preceded by an event such as that which would, we, would, we could characterize as a revolution. So what they call RevGov is like a, a change in government without an actual revolution. So I think there might be some difficulty in establishing the legitimacy of that revolutionary government. However, just recently the president announced that, as he had always announced during the elections, that if he cannot uh, control or discipline some aspect of, his, of, the go of governance, then he will be compelled to declare a revolutionary government. The president is far more careful than those who are calling for RevGov because uh, it is very clear that he will not declare a rev revolutionary government unless it has become impossible. So this, this would mean that if the society is characterized by either widespread criminality that cannot be controlled, which would call for the use of extraordinary powers, such as, for instance, martial law in cases of uh, rebellion or invasion. Uh, but uh, clearly, this is beyond martial law. So the circumstances have to be present. Remember to listen to the president because uh, as a lawyer, he understands what needs to be done in order to establish the legitimacy of a subsequent revolutionary government in case the circumstances should warrant it. Okay, general rule, I would be against a RevGov if the circumstances do not warrant it. But the president has stated very clearly if the circumstances warrant it. So that's where we should, uh, we should uh, put our attention. Uh, Joe Black says, we just need to conduct a huge rally to call out the president to declare Revgov. Same lang naman, yan with EDSA. EDSA was just a rally. Uh, I disagree with EDSA being just a rally. It began as a coup attempt. So it means that there were movements by various forces in government. It wasn't just the people who were moving. Were it not for the actions of... Uh, former Defense Minister Juan Ponce Envile and uh, former PC Chief uh, Fidel Ramos, this was what precipitated uh, a turn of events. Remember that it was Corey calling out for people to protect them, that people gathered in the streets, as well as the call out by uh, Cardinal Sin at the time. Um, Anton de Jesus asks, if makakasuan po siya, pwede na siyang hindi sumagot sa mga tanong sa kanya pagdating sa Senate hearing. I don't think she will, uh, even if she's uh, sued right now, it will still go through a uh, preliminary investigation. So she still will be compelled to go to the Senate hearing. At any rate, even if she has a case, she can be called by the Senate to testify. The problem lang is, is um, if there is an ongoing case, she can claim that you know either she has already given testimony in the previous proceeding and just submit her affidavits to the Senate, so she doesn't have to answer uh, doesn't have to make a repeated narration, but she can still be compelled to attend. The question nga lang is, um, if it is being uh, tried by the courts, how it's going to affect it, and if she's going to claim the right to, you know, to see to it that uh, whatever she says does not affect the proceedings in the trial court. Um, Possible ba si uh, Sorry, that, that went too fast. Uh, for those who are not able to read, you'll have to repeat your comment. We're just going through. Uh, bakit po 
puro simula lang ang Senado, yung tungkol sa seven deadly sins, umikot na at parang wala na. No, that's not true. Senator Grace Poe was not able to terminate the hearing at the last hearing because uh, Kokai Dayao did not appear. He, and he was the primary impetus for calling that hearing. So, it's not that puro umpisa. Senator Grace Po did announce that there's supposed to be another hearing. And in this next hearing, we can ask Senator Grace Po or petition Senator Grace Po to also call uh, the other bloggers who posted an article, the, the Kokai Dayao article, or an article similar to that, claiming that the seven senators deliberately did not sign the resolution and the uh, the the blogs that characterize the, uh, that as a refusal to sign the senators have said that it wasn't a refusal to sign they were just unaware of the resolution or were not given enough time to do so um anna bestid anna leah bestid emilia says right to self-incrimination well that right is available at any time that a person is compelled to answer um okay parang ng questions uh is personal data acquired from a public site legal? Okay, if personal data is readily available, uh, there is, remember, in, when, you, when you set up a blog or, or, or you fill up forms online, there's usually a disclaimer or the, the data processor, the information, personal information collector, will usually say that they promise not to give out the information, etc. Um, however, the person who has given that data or the, that information is also aware of how that information can be accessed. For example, uh, there's some that they're told that they can be the administrator's name can be put to private and not be accessible if they pay a certain fee. So the the owner or administrator of a site is usually aware of what information is readily available. Um, her beef with the holder or the data, uh, the personal data controller or collector should be that she should be better informed and she could say that. But if it is readily available and she's aware of that, then that may be considered a waiver on her part. Um, Chi Santo says, why do you think Hilboy wants to handle Jover's cases? Do you think he knows about her libelous posts? I think that um, a, a, an attorney and client relationship is personal and one of trust. So I think it's because uh, Attorney Hilby is well aware of, of what she's going through. Attorney Hilby has made it clear that he is handling the case as an issue, as a constitutional issue of the right to privacy and he says the right to remain anonymous is inherent in the right to free speech of course we will contest that but uh, let's see that is his uh, that is his clear defense or clear um, statement of his case against the other bloggers uh, i disagree but we will um, we will discuss that later when we see more of uh, attorney hill by his case uh, Estong Pimentel asks, Pwede po bang ipatawag rin si Jover sa next Senate hearing? I don't see why not. Because she also posted the, uh, uh, the Seven Deadly Sins or an article similar to that one. Um, uh, somebody asked if TP is liable in the case to be filed by Jover. Well, we don't see know yet what case she is filing. So we will not be able to say that. But right now, if she claims that she's filing under the Data Privacy Act, then uh, I don't think so, not on its face. But we have to see, you know, until we see a complaint actually filed by Ms. Jover, then we can't say if first there is a crime or two, who is liable for that crime. Um, Straw Hat says, possible ba na Kokoy may be dead? Well, I, I want to think not. Uh, para wala na silang ma-interrogate. Hmm, but possible scenario kaya yon para ma-blame nila yung administration. Well, if you're going to think conspiracy theories, then of course anything is possible. But I would like to think that human life is a little more um, expensive than that. Gillian Nev says, do you think PCOO should be more proactive and not just be reacting belatedly to destructive criticisms and destab attempts? I think that, remember that the president also had issued a directive that uh, 
the PCOO should be not belligerent. So they're also complying with that. Um, Attorney, will TP be held liable? Uh, on, it, on the face of Jover's lawyer's statements, I don't see yet a case against a thinking Pinoy. So we will see. We will see. You know, right now you can't tell because you can't see any complaints. You know, it is also possible that Ms. Laurio is making statements about filing cases to send, a, to send what we call a chilling effect to make people stop uh, talking badly about her uh, because people will now be afraid of being sued for libel. So her, her statement that she will file libel suits um, is, is essential so that she can get some relief from all the uh, what she believes are, are detrimental messages and, and, and painful messages and posts against her. Um, Ms. Jover also should take into consideration the fact that she had made similar posts before and that this may be a natural consequence of that. Possible lahat ng andun sa mga picture ay sila lahat na sa likod ng blogs ng mga anti-Duterte. Well, I agree that that is possible. Also, her um, conversations or her posts seem to indicate a more than just passing acquaintance with uh, with other with the politicians and the gov former government officials that she had posted with so definitely we can show some kind of relationship uh, whether or not uh, that relationship is pursuant to her putting up a blog uh, we will see because uh, if i'm not mistaken there should be also an investigation into this Vince Osmilio asks, Attorney, what would happen if PAB, PAB is sued by multiple or different persons in different courts? Well, if it's for libel, then libel is personal. So, for example, Ms. Sasot files in one court. Uh, another person can file in another court, and another person can file in another court, and that would be perfectly legal. There is no need to file in all the same courts. General rule for cyber libel, you have to file in the place of your residence. So if the people who are libeled have different residences, then they will be filing in the cities where they have residences. Um, Orly says, mahina yung audio. Does anybody else confirm this? Um, basta ako nagsasabi, pangit ako bag. It's over love, yeah. You know what? I really don't like insulting a person for his or her physical attributes, even if they do that to me. Because, well, number one, mataas ang self-esteem ko. So you can say anything about how I look and I won't feel bad about it because, you know, I don't care. So, Attorney TP also mentioned that Jover might be put into a similar situation with Matobato na mas sneak out palabas ng bansa. Well, you know, TP has always been very good at making these sorts of uh, education, educated guesses. So my money is on, on thinking Pinoy. Yes, it's a possibility. Um, one, because she is going to, is possibly going to be facing a lot of libel cases for some of her very critical um, articles in her blog. Okay, yay, thank you, audio is good. Renka Domingo asks, any idea who will pursue the case against her? Sa senators kasi mukhang di nila ipapursue yun dahil babae siya, like Trillanes, pinababayaan na lang nila. I disagree. Senator Trillanes did file an actual case against uh, Assistant Secretary Moka Uson, regardless of gender. So uh, I wouldn't uh, dismiss the senators and think that they're not filing cases because, you know, gender, I think, is not going to matter at this point. Uh, Ken Iglesia Taki says, may magpapa-interview din ba from your camp, your camp, sa CNN or sa BBC? Well, we will see. We will see. Um, I think that BBC, if it wants to be fair, will probably get the uh, side of those who, well, it should, no? Either those who were libeled by the Pinoy Ako blog or representatives of those that she imagines she will possibly be filing cases against. So let's give BBC an opportunity to rectify that one-sided interview and, uh, no, and let's see what is going to happen if they, if they get the side of uh, either the government or, or thinking Pinoy or Ms. Sas Roganda Sasot. Um, hi. Also, she might ask for political asylum in another country. Don't you think dapat may hold order na siya? Okay, hold orders. First of all, you don't, you're not uh, allowed, you get a hold order from a court. And you can get that when there is a case. So, 
if Miss Laurio has a case filed against her and it is already in court, in other words, it has finished through the prosecutor's office, probable cause has been found, the case is filed in the regional trial court, uh, the regional trial court can issue an order upon the filing of a motion by the appropriate party, in this case the prosecution, can ask for a whole departure order against Ms. Laurio. When the case is still with the prosecutor's office and probable cause has not yet been found, then uh, the complainant can ask for a watch list order to be issued by the DOJ. So at the moment, since no case has yet been filed, then uh, the whole departure order would be inappropriate for Ms. Lowry at this time. Um, Ipahold departure na yan. Amy says, Ami Mescaliado says, Ipahold departure na yan, attorney, baka tumakas. Right now, without a case, he can't issue a whole departure order. Uh, Nel Nel asks, If your attorney will buy and Jover is your client, what's your legal defense? Are you willing to accept or not, given her circumstances? You know, right now, if I don't know what her side is, I wouldn't uh, hazard a guess with, you know. I, but Attorney Hilbay has been very clear that his ground is constitutional. Uh, according to Attorney Hilbay, uh, Ms. Jover has a right to privacy and the right to remain anonymous. My problem with that is, it wasn't Thinking Pinoy who outed her exactly. Thinking Pinoy posited the theory that Ms. Jover might po possibly be the Miss Jover Laurio might possibly be Pinoy Ako blog, and it was Miss Laurio who announced that she is, and she said, "What of it?" That was her reaction. So clearly, if she indicates that uh, that it's not a big deal that she is Pinoy Ako blog, then it shouldn't be a big deal that uh, thinking Pinoy was able to out her. Uh, however, that is the stand of uh, uh, of Attorney Hilby at the moment. Attorney uh, Renka Domingo asks, Attorney, di ba pwede pilitin ang Rappler to show na second, sa second Senate hearing? Um, if Senator Grace Po issues a subpoena, then they can be compelled to attend. But uh, the question is whether or not Senator Grace Po would like to actually subpoena them. Remember that media organizations, uh, whether it's a newspaper or, uh, or a broadcast uh, uh, or a television station, they're always very conscious that when they're called or subjected to processes like court processes or the Senate's processes of compulsion to attend a hearing, they always try to, they always put up the defense that this might be detrimental to press freedom or to freedom of the press. They can claim that by calling them to the Senate hearing and being held accountable for certain things will amount to a chilling effect. In other words, they will, not, they will now be scared or uh, frightened into writing other articles that may possibly be detrimental to the, the people who have issued that processes, like the Senate or the House or a court. So it's very likely that Rappler, even if issued a subpoena, might claim that it is detrimental to press freedom to show up and therefore as a matter of principle they might not show up. I, I would disagree with that of course but uh, doubtless that they, they will possibly raise that, that particular issue. Okay, reminder lang for those who haven't shared yet, please do share. For those who haven't clicked the follow button, please do so and subscribe to the live videos here. Uh, please understand that the, the YouTube channels that have been showing this aren't my channels. So, um, but if you want to be informed immediately <coughs> of, of a Facebook Live here, then uh, subscribing to, to the live here on, 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 the, on the app will be much easier. Um, a person whose name I cannot read says, Attorney, I think kailangan na magtayo ng isa pang viewer like NBI para mag-focus lang sa D-stab plots. I think many will agree that TPN sa, sorry, okay, no, wala na. Um, hmm. The destabilization, okay, there's no crime of destab. There are crimes like rebellion and sedition and others, uh, other crimes that go into affecting the security of the state or uh, affecting the, the, the existence of the state. 
And so these fall under the law enforcement agencies which are authorized to investigate it, like the PNP and the NBI. So what we need to do is not set up a separate bureau because you'll run into a lot of red tape that way. Also, it's going to be very difficult to pass legislation <coughs> creating a new government agency and a new budget just for that when it can be covered by law enforcement. Remember, law enforcement agencies such as the NBI and the PNP uh, are, are there to enforce the criminal laws. So there are already agencies that do that, and all we need to do is to upgrade them or to make them aware of, the, of how these things can link up to a possible crime such as rebellion or sedition. Hi, Attorney TCA. Looking radiant today. Now it's my phone. Sana po magkaroon din na national forum or convention lahat ng pro Duterte bloggers sometime and invite the president. Uh, for me, that actually is a good idea, but are you willing to uh, organize that? Because I'm not. Sounds really tiring. Um, Cristiano B. Valeriano says, Jose Cabella is fine. He's actually very gentlemanly and so eloquent. I agree. We are also attorney that PRID has expressed tolerance for dissent and he wants free speech. Also agree. What is irritating is hearing ABS-CBN and GMA reporting twisted and misrepresented acts, uh, uh, facts. All right. For broadcast uh, agents for broadcast media then these have franchises and we just need to examine whether or not covered in this franchise is the requirement to give news okay you know the history of the evening news in the united states when television history lesson in the united states when when television was new and the u.s congress was giving out franchises they they told the 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 channels, you know, the broadcast agencies, that for 23 hours, you can do whatever you want. Show whatever you want, subject to obscenity laws and uh, sedition and all, all of those other free speech laws. However, for one hour every day, that is the, what became known as the 6 o'clock news, the obligation of these television stations was to give service to the country. And that one hour of service was called the evening news. During that time, they were supposed to deliver current events, current uh, uh, things that were happening to the American public. And we patterned our franchises after this, uh, this sort of pattern. When it came here, however, there was, uh, there was no actual requirement. Television stations just patterned their programmings after the United States. However, in the United States, the, the, there was one thing that they forgot. They forgot to tell uh, the television stations not to have advertising or not to require advertising for the evening news. Uh, the reason for this is because it's supposed to be meant to be public service. Uh, however, since advertising was allowed for the evening news, uh, some uh, communications theorists believe that this led to the entertainmenting or the magazinifying of television news. Uh, the news that was being presented now became the news that they felt more people were going to watch. Uh, the evening news was not supposed to be part of the ratings game, but because there are advertisers, it now became part of the ratings <coughs> game. And so we now have the phenomenon of uh, the news being delivered by people who want to deliver it to the most number of people with profit in mind. The same holds true with printed media such as uh, newspapers because they want to deliver the kind of news that they feel people will want to read, uh, which will explain um, what an editorialize, what editorializing means. It means that uh, some of these stories are deliberately angled for a wider viewership. That's why you have reporters trying to scoop each other, trying to get the news faster or first before everybody else. Um, the problem is, well, we can hold possibly through the franchises, the broadcast media, for, um, for their failure to deliver their public services. But it is difficult because newspapers do not have franchises. What they do have is a you know, incorporation. And so therefore, they're subject to the Securities and Exchange Commission. But this is where free speech comes in. Um, we're very particularly conscious, as is the president, that any attempt to stifle free speech will be seen as another as uh, as as oppressive, and the president is a big believer in free speech. 
Now, holding people accountable for what they say when what they say is not libelous or not otherwise punishable by law is something that the president does not believe in. So, we have a president who clearly upholds the freedom of speech. So, if you have that kind of government policy, then going uh, after people when they have clearly not disobeyed any laws or it is you know very difficult to call may be considered as an inordinate oppression of free speech so understand also this that this is the paradigm that pcoo is working on i'm not saying that pcoo is is perfect but what i'm saying is that the policy directive given by the president is not to suppress free speech not to even look like you're suppressing free speech and certainly not to be retaliatory. So until the president changes his directive, then the PCOO will be primarily focused on that particular function of simply delivering information. Um, Vecvec Lucan Garcia asks, um, are you in favor of what Tatay Digong wants as a revolutionary government? I think that the president is in the best position uh, to determine whether or not a revolution is necessary. So, but a revolution will happen with or without the president. So we will see. The president has made it clear that there has to be certain uh, conditions present, present in order for there to be an actual revolution and for him to exercise the fullest, to the fullest his executive uh, powers. Uh, Mira Kalsara Ito says, Ito yung chicks, sigurado po ba yung impeachment kay Andy Bautista pag bubutuhan pa sa Senate? Okay, as I said earlier, impeachment is what happens in the House. In the Senate, it's called a trial. So he has already been impeached. He has not yet been removed. Those are two different things. Okay. Uh, RJ Nieto says, Hi, Attorney. RJ, sorry I couldn't answer your call. I'll answer in a little while. Attorney, if they figure out, sorry. <laughs> Uh, guys, please uh, give a shout out to Thinking Pinoy who's watching right now. Can you please, um, yeah, please, and, and please congratulate him for his excellent work on finding out, uh, finding Kokoi, hashtag finding Kokoi, and uh, on, on Miss, uh, Miss Jover. Um, it, he's also pushing the limits of, of jurisprudence right now because whatever case comes out of this, Thinking Pinoy is going to be at the forefront of that. So guys, please say hi to Thinking Pinoy and please thank him for all the good work that he's been doing and all the wonderful, uh, all the wonderful articles that come out of his blog. And also congratulate him, he has now reached the 1 million mark. Thinking Pinoy is now officially, it has, now officially has 1 million followers. Hi DP, congratulations. Okay, other questions? Uh, yes. I like that. Congratulations, TP. You're an online hero. And yes, please be safe. Ay, nako ma'am. Tip of the iceberg pa lang yan. Sabi ni RJ, no tip of the ice plant. I agree. Okay, sige. Um, cleared ka na. Your permission is granted. If if my son says, ha, um, go, go. <laughs> my daughter's looking at me really badly. Okay. <laughs> uh Oy, kukonti pa lang ang nag-share. Yung mga hindi pa nag-share dyan, please go ahead and do so. Um, if there are no other questions, what other questions do you want? Um, okay, uh, congrats. O puro congrats. Sige, wala nang questions because if there are no more questions, I really have to take a phone call. Uh, RJ Nieto for 2022. <laughs> congrats to TP, yes. All right. If there are no more questions, remember, ha, please, please, if you're going to remember something from today's uh, Facebook Live, it is this. Number one, impeachment is what happens in the House. Andy Bautista has been impeached. Uh, what happens in the Senate is a trial, and it is after trial and a finding of guilt that a public officer is removed from office. Therefore, Andy Bautista is still COMELEC chairman. Unless, and unless his resignation becomes effective, he will remain COMELEC chairman until after he is removed uh, post-trial. So in the meantime, he is still COMELEC chairman. Uh, any updates sa libel case na sinampan ni Secretary Pinyol kay Frank Simatu? None yet. Um, I understand that uh, Secretary Pinyol has filed the case, but uh, it's we don't know yet if uh, Mr. Simatu has responded. Um, 
Okay, biglang dumami ang viewers na dumating si TP. Yes, so we should also thank TP. Thank you very much, TP, for uh, guesting. <laughs> Guest yata talaga yung tawag sa'yo, no? Okay, uh, anything else? Paano po, what happens kay Dayaw kung nasa likod nila na... Ah, okay. The, the, which is why it would be interesting for the Senate to call Miss Jover because uh, she can be asked whether or not she's actually acting alone. Her claims in, in her public pronouncement is that she's alone and in fact, she's being spun as some kind of modern hero. So if there's anything that you can do for the president, it is this. It is to state clearly and categorically that Miss Jover is not a hero. She is not the poster child for the freedom of speech. Uh, Ms. Jover has posted what can clearly be defined as libelous articles. She has gone beyond uh, acceptable free speech and possibly treaded in what we call criminal speech, which is not protected. Remember, libel is not protected speech. Libel is not free speech. Libel is not going to fall under the constitutional prescription of the freedom of speech. So regardless, I think, of what Attorney Hill Bay says. Um, uh, hello, ma'am. Please share naman your international law notes. My international law notes about what? And, you know, it's been a while since my last bar, since my last exam in international law. So what I teach is, um, is, is fine arts, which is basically uh, copyright and, and heritage law. Attorney, is there a maximum number of days for De Lima to be in jail without a technicality? No. Um, Senator De Lima's crime, uh, she has been charged with a non-bailable crime, which is the violation of the Dangerous Drugs Act. So there is no set number of days where she's in jail and then has to go free. Uh, what you're talking about might be where a person who has been caught without virtue of a warrant can be held without being charged. She has been charged, as a matter of fact, a warrant of arrest was issued for her and the court has acquired jurisdiction over her. So, um, no, she, she, what needs to happen is for her to be arraigned if she hasn't yet been arraigned or for trial to now proceed. If uh, Senator Dilima feels that she is entitled to bail, then she can file a petition for bail and present evidence that her uh, her, that the evidence of guilt is not strong. <coughs> um, Attorney, okay lang bang Rev. Gov? No, I've already answered that one. So, bang talino, good job, RJ Nieto. Yes. Okay, uh, if there's uh, nothing else, non-bailable, masaya po kami sa news niyan. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's why, uh, said, that's the reason why Senator De Lima went to the Supreme Court questioning her warrant of arrest what she did was she went to the supreme court asking her for her warrant of arrest to be voided uh, on the ground that it was uh, filed before the department of justice and not before the ombudsman but she the court correctly pointed out the supreme court pointed out that she has been charged under the dangerous drugs act which is an exception to the jurisdiction of the ombudsman uh, under the Dangerous Drugs Act, the sole jurisdiction, the, the jurisdiction for the trial would fall under the Regional Trial Court, and therefore the DOJ is the appropriate place to file uh, the the case for against her. Uh, Flaviana Elma asks, please discuss how Jover will go to jail, lalo na nasa mga pin pinira niya. Well, if the if any of the seven senators or if all of them file libel suits against Ms. Jover. Uh, they they could possibly uh, send her to jail if a finding of probable cause is made by the by the prosecutor's office, and you know and and the senators win at the prosecutor's office. There's a finding of probable cause that it will be filed in court. So if the seven senators file seven different libel cases, um, she will go to jail, but she can file for bail uh, for all of those. Uh, libel cases. Bailable po kasi ang libel. But if she's found guilty by the by the trial court, then yes, she will be sentenced. So, there is a jail term for libel. Uh, good evening, sabi ni Edsel. Wala po bang magagawa sa mga fake news na ginagawa ng mga bloggers ng LP? Alright. This one, this is important. 
under Article 154, Unlawful Publications of the Revised Penal Code, if the um, false news affects national security or the national interest, then you can file a case for that. Um, we have been getting reports that the OFWs uh, in some areas are being harassed because they are being told that uh, they are supportive of genocide or supportive of an administration that is killing its own citizens. We know this is not true. And nevertheless, the news of 13,000, 14,000 being killed can constitute uh, fake news that affects the public interest. Um, so cases can be filed against irresponsible reporting if uh, this false news has a tendency to affect the national interest. So my guess is that we should be looking into that one. Perhaps the DOJ should be looking into this, uh, this angle if we want to hold uh, the purveyors of this false news to account for their statements. Um, under Article 154, bakit di pa nakakasuhan si Robredo? Because she's vice president and she can only be removed by impeachment. So technically, can well, that's a gray area. Uh, maybe a case can be filed against her, but I doubt if it will be entertained. You can file a case against her after she se steps down as vice president. Um, I'm no longer answering questions about Trillianis' ethics case because I already posted it on my wall and you always ask me that. Uh, Benny Rasmussen says, Tony Chicks, you're so special to me. What <laughs> a special child. Um, thank you very much. Is it a conflict of interest that the consultant of government specific project? I'm sorry, I did not see that, so uh, you'll have to repeat your question. Ateni, ano po nangyari sa kaso ni Lenny Robredo? Okay, for those who are asking for updates on cases, this is what I'm going to do. Every time something happens, I will announce it on Facebook Live and discuss it with you. If nothing has happened, then there is nothing that happened and there's nothing to discuss. In the case of Ms. Lenny, of Vice President Lenny Robredo, we filed an impeachment case against her, but it has no sponsor yet. So at the moment, it is still with the Speaker Alvarez of the House. So until a sponsor comes forward, then it will stay there. Um, Alviric asks, is it a conflict of interest? Again, hindi ko na naman nakita. When is the next Senate hearing? Ellie Carrera is asking on fake news in the Senate and why only pro detective bloggers are there. Well, at the time, uh, Kokoy Dial received an invitation to go to the Senate on its hearing under uh, Senator Grace Paul's uh, committee, but he did not show up. So that is why only the pro Duterte bloggers were there. Um, okay, so somebody's saying that I don't look good under these lights. Sorry, these are fluorescent lights. Um, but if I if I put the lighting on in my, my phone, it's going to look just as bad. So I'm sorry, you're going to have to deal with this lighting until next time. Uh, I'll use a better lamp next time. Take that into consideration. Attorney... Okay, anong status ni BBM protest? Again, that's another case. I've already given you the updates on that. It has not moved from there. Uh, ballot boxes are allowed to be counted and opened in the uh, in the petition of uh, of uh, Mr. Marcos, but not yet with uh, Vice President Robledo because she has not paid. Um, ano pong tingin niyo sa performance ni Duterte? Okay, last two questions, ah. Um, and putting in his performance with Duterte, I think that from the moment that he guaranteed free tertiary education, free education up to the tertiary level, and uh, guaranteed the uh, health care for everybody um, under PhilHealth, on those alone, the president gets 10 stars out of five. So um, I'm already very happy with that one. And the fact that this president is a firm believer on on I mean, free speech and our constitutional rights and the fact that he's well aware of the traps that are being laid for him and, and that, that he has been a good strategist um, for me, no matter what, uh, what people say about him. And despite the mistakes, of course, I, you know, I still cringe sometimes when he, when he talks and, and is politically incorrect. But uh, I think that so far, all of the good outweighs the bad. Uh, attorney to talk to by payment ni BBM? Yes, <laughs> the court already acknowledged it. Um, okay, one last question. 
Attorney, does Jover need to pay bail for every libel case that she will get? If, for example, 50 libel cases, if she can't pay, we should go to jail. Yes. Um, each, uh, if, for each person, that will be a separate case, and that person can, you, you know, can allege several counts of libel. Let's say, for example, lang, ha, um, Ms. Sasot says that uh, she was libeled in two different articles, then that might be two different counts of libel, but that's only for Ms. Sasot. Now then, let's say, for example lang, I'm not saying that they're going to do this, uh, let's say Asek Padoy also files her own case, um, and then there are two instances, that's another two counts for Asek Padoy. So that's, those are two different uh, instances, and four different counts of libel, and she has to pay for bail in all of that. So, if she wants to not stay in jail. That's assuming huh, that there is a probable cause finding. Um, okay, uh, so if there are no other questions, sana next in line si Inday Sara. You know what, guys? Seriously? And, uh, you know, I'm seeing the Quixie and TP and Inday Sara for senator or president or whatever. If you want your candidates to win, don't mention their names until it is close to election. And there is a time for selecting the candidates. If you uh, make an announcement right now for anybody running for any office, I assure you that the political enemies will be coming out of the woodwork to try to destroy your bets. So if you really want TP to run in 2022, do not mention his eligibility until around that time. That way we can guarantee that he's going to win. As for me, I'm completely and totally uninterested. And, you know, I have too many sins to account for, so that might not be a good idea. Um, but I'm really happy just doing Facebook Live for you. Um, so for, for those who have not shared, please go ahead and do so. And, and, and for, those who, for those who just came on, oh, there's, wow, there's 3,400 of you online. Interesting. Guys, if you haven't shared, please do so. <laughs> because there is 3.3 3, thousand of you, I'll be willing to entertain another two questions. Um, well, TP Sas and I were on a were did a can talk once, all three of us. Oh, 3.4 na yan. So, any other questions? Um, well, thank you very much, also by the way, for everybody who sends their love, their best wishes, and their thank yous and congratulations. I'd like to acknowledge every one of them, but sometimes I'm not capable of doing so because there's so many. So I'd like to let you know that I see all of your messages. I'm just not capable of answering all of them. Um, I will try to get back to, to most of them, but as you can see, I also up to my ears all of a sudden with work. Um, uh, and for those who send me blessings, for those who pray for us, I'd really like to thank you very, very much for all of those. Uh, blessings and, and all of your prayers. Um, for that, that I will always accept. It's very difficult to accept compliments, but definitely that uh, we, will, we will accept. Okay, um, well, I'm happy to announce that Senator Enrile allowed me to upload his book, his, his pamphlet, his little manuscript uh, on why President Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law. So um, I think by tomorrow, I will be posting that here. So I hope you, you, you get to read that. Um, Ace Kalonia is asking about my professional background. I think there are enough haters out there to tell you all of my sins. So you can, you can ask them. But uh, so yeah, one of these days, I'll repeat. I already told everybody my, my background. I passed the bar in 1998 graduated from UP Law uh, and UP un undergraduate, my undergraduate degrees in linguistics. Um, I'm taking my <coughs> MA in archaeology. I have an unfinished minor in international relations ma major in peace, conflict, and security. Um, that's from the University of Minnesota. So that's the educational background. The professional background is legal counsel for the NCCA for the longest time. As commissioner, uh, I was uh, a commissioner of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts uh, in the Subcommission on Cultural Heritage. I am also a conservationist, so and a conservator. <coughs> so there's there's your background. As for my sins, I I'm pretty sure they're all online. Mm. 
Attorney Chicks, can you give us a brief explanation as to the determination of probable cause sa libel? Kailan po makakonsider ang libel as isang paninira? Okay, libel, again, is a malicious imputation of a crime, vice, or defect. So, it's it's really very, very, fairly simple. Um, uh, the You will hear a principle that says, for instance, the truth is not a defense in libel cases, and that is also true. Uh, sometimes, uh, a statement or uh, an imputation can be libelous, even if it is true when there is no reason for giving that uh, information. So, for example, um, with our public officials, it is considered acceptable to inquire into their personal lives. That's not a problem. But for others who are not similarly situated, uh, and they try to keep part of their lives private, so divulging certain details about them when there is no need to do so is considered libelous. So, for example, uh, in the United States, for example, there is what we call the juvenile uh, uh, law. Um, if you commit a crime and you're under the age of 18 and you're considered a juvenile at the time of the crime, then your records are sealed. Um, you will probably go to juvie or something or you pay for it one way or another. Um, when you After you become 18, then those records are sealed. If somebody brings it up, let's say this person was arrested for shoplifting, yada, yada, there is an absolute um, bar against bringing that out. And that can be considered libelous because there is no purpose in um, giving out that information. And that information is deliberately sealed. So, um, Redden says, Kas Kasuhan mo po si Jover, grabe man lait. Well, okay, there's certain things like, I'm very sure that there are people who are going to file libel suits. I will certainly consider filing one on, you know, on my own behalf for the things that she said about me. Um, however, uh, like the president, I am also a big believer on the freedom of speech. I feel that the freedom of speech also includes the kind of speech that we don't want to hear. And if there is no purpose in, uh, in filing a libel suit, if it causes people to be afraid of telling the truth or, telling, or speaking their mind, then my personal decision is to just let it be because I would much rather be maligned and hear more free speech than to hear a totally quiet internet where nothing is actually said because people are afraid so i have taken the same stand as the president uh, this does not mean that i'm not filing a libel case what it means is that my general outlook is that i'm for free speech and i'm for a free internet but in siguro if 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 it is to make people more aware that there's certain speech that is not protected and if there are certain certain things because i don't read her eh? And I don't read all of the hate sites. I don't want to add to their engagement. So generally, I don't really like, uh, since I don't read them, I'm not that affected <laughs> by what they say. So, um, But there are certain people um, who, who feel very strongly, and I certainly urge them, if they feel strongly that they have been maligned, that a malicious imputation has been made on them, and they feel that their reputation is ruined, or at least certainly affected by what this person says, then I strongly encourage everybody to file the appropriate libel cases. Also, if you feel very strongly against these hate sites, then please consider filing the appropriate cases, such as uh, the violation of Article 154, or if you have personally been maligned, to file a libel suit against this person. They, there certainly is a public good related to that. Uh, some people believe, and this, this is most likely true, some people believe that if you file libel cases often enough, people will, cert will learn to take discourse to a higher level. Uh, and, and to that extent, yes, I agree. Because you know what an ad hominem is? An ad hominem is an argument that isn't a real argument. It just attacks the person. So if you will recall, a few days ago, I posted that somebody had called me a bad person. Well, of course, they said something worse than that. Um, they called me well, what is basically a bad person for defending Asek Moka Uson. And my answer is this. OK, I'm a bad person, but you did not answer my argument. So the, we should also hold what we call ad hominem statements in the same light. Um, some people, when they run out of arguments, they'll just try to destroy you. but. You know, me, personally, I refuse to be destroyed. I am not going to be affected by what another person thinks. I'm only affected by what I think. 
excuse. I want to be a uh, good faith. I want to be the good guy. And if they want to be the bad guy, they're free to do that. I'm not going to be that. I have uh, many sins in the past that I have to atone for. So the best thing for me to do right now is just to stay good. So um, if they want to, to call me names, then, you know, sticks and stones, as if I care. So um, I think it bothers them more that I don't care than, than it is for them, than it is for me to be affected. What's the best of pro-admin bloggers? Mr. Alfred Cayabo says, they're so professional, intelligent, at makabayan. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, thank you. Attorney, sana malaman ng tunay na mastermind ng 6.4 billion na shabu na nakapasok sa bansa. Uh, I agree. Oh yes, that's one other thing that we forgot to discuss. The transfer to PIDEA of the primary... Uh, obligation to go after drugs cases. Now, the PIDEA is actually the primary agency to go after drugs cases. However, the PNP is uh, allowed to do so provided that they coordinate with the PIDEA. So PIDEA has always been the lead agency. What President Duterte is saying is that now the, the lead agency in the drugs operations will be PIDEA. Now, some people have said that oh, uh, PIDEA seems to be such a small agency. Will they be able to do what the Philippine National Police has been doing? And my answer is this. The, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency has the power to deputize police, uh, barangay, and military in order for them to conduct their operations. So they can... Um, the PIDEA it doesn't have its own agents. What it does is they get second met. They get assignments of police, NBI, military officials, and they are assigned uh, pursuant to their service in the PIDEA. So PIDEA can actually ask for more personnel from the PNP and the AFP or to deputize additional agents so that they can comply with the presidential directive to take the lead in drug operations. So there's nothing wrong with the PIDEA being the lead agency. I'm very happy that the PIDEA will be the lead agency which is not to say I was not satisfied with the PNP, <coughs> but I also like that the president acknowledged the criticisms uh, uh, of the, the manner in which the PNP has been conducting its operations, which also says a lot about the president, that he is responsive even to criticism, and he would like to comply with, uh, with the requirements even of the public's uh, concern. So congratulations, I think the president deserves kudos for that, that he at least adjusts his policies per, uh, pursuant to the fact that he is a, a listening president. And that's what I like about this president, is that he does actually listen. Um, okay, so the other questions are now repetitive. It's okay, you know, at, at, when, when somebody posts a, an angry icon, sometimes they're just angry at the, the truth that I have to, to say or some of the facts that I have to say doesn't necessarily mean they're angry at me. But then it's also okay to be angry at me. Um, it's just that um, I don't see any reason why they should be right now. Uh, nevertheless, you know, people are free to do that. So thank you. Okay, last, last. Okay. Kamusta na ma'am yung Alex complaint? Okay, I've already answered that. Uh, we're waiting for a resolution by Senator Soto, uh, assuming that Senator Chilianes has submitted his answer. Okay, if there are no further questions, uh, yes, Renka asks that we talk about customs next time. Uh, yes, we, we can do that. Um, I've been avoiding uh, talking about customs because uh, of, of the possibility that I may not deliver good information to you since uh, uh, Com Don was my client before uh, in his mutiny cases and his cases for escape and, and uh, his, uh, his courts martial. So, um, or that you might not find me credible when we discuss the customs cases. So maybe next time we'll, we'll do that. And next time also we'll do a further study about the, the statements of Ms. Jover and what possible cases she could be filing uh, pursuant to, to the statements also made that by, by former Solicitor General Florian Hilby. Okay, thank you very much, my goodness. 3.4 thousand viewers online. I really should, you know, should thank uh, Thinking Pinoy for, for guesting today, uh, for, for being around. Um, and thank you very much for everybody who has always really good thoughts uh, about me and about this, this Facebook Live. Um, 
if you have further <coughs> questions, you can just post on the wall. Oh, by one more last one last uh, announcement. Um, in sometimes my messages are just too numerous that I can't get to them. And if you're going to ask individual questions about things that I post on my wall, I will answer you faster if you post it on my wall. Um, if you post it in my messages, it might take a long time for me to see it or even to answer it or may not answer it at all. Because sometimes it's just a huge deluge and, and you know I, I might not have time for that. But on my wall, I will do my best to answer you if I have an answer. Okay, so thank you very much um, for, for listening and for, for being here. Next Saturday we'll be on again. This time it will be at 10 a.m. as we agreed upon. I apologize for being late today. Um, of course, we'll, if something happens during the week, we'll also do another Facebook Live. Thank you very much for, for listening and thank you, thank you very, very much for all your good thoughts. And for all the hearts and likes, wow, thank you. I'll, I'll see you again soon. Bye.